friction. At the end of this topic, you will be able to learn basic concepts like types of friction, laws of friction, angle of friction, criteria for minimum force required for the body to impend, wedge and its application, applications of friction. Introduction to Friction Friction is a retarding force always acting opposite to the motion or the tendency to move. Friction primarily exists because of the roughness of the contact surfaces. If the contact surface is smooth, there is no friction. In machines, friction is both a liability and an asset. Frictional effects are associated with energy dissipation and are therefore considered undesirable. Hence, it becomes very much necessary to study the types of friction. Introduction and Definition of Friction In practice, all surfaces are not smooth and hence the body has to support a tangential force and a normal force at its surface of contact. How is it that the perpendicular force is able to balance the book? It is the frictional force between the wall and the book that holds the book up. By pressing against it, we are increasing the normal reaction force R between the book and the wall. The friction may be defined as the contact resistance exerted by one body upon a second body when the second body moves or tends to move past the first body. The section deals with problems involving frictional forces. Let us discuss the various types of friction. Basically, friction is of two types. They are dry friction and fluid friction. Dry friction. Dry friction is a friction between unlubricated surfaces of bodies in contact. The friction that exists between two unlubricated surfaces is known as dry friction. This friction between two dry surfaces is often called Coulomb friction since C. A. Coulomb studied its characteristics in 1781. There are two types of dry frictions which are as follows. 1. Sliding friction or solid friction. The friction that exists when one surface slides over another surface is known as sliding or solid friction. 2. Rolling friction. It occurs where one member rolls without slipping over another. It is a known fact that it requires more effort to pull a garden roller over a soft lawn than over concrete road. Yet, in neither case, there is any sliding. This occurs because no body is truly rigid and hence rolling will cause continuous deformation of both surfaces giving rise to internal friction. The flexible objects have the highest rolling friction. The rolling friction is always less than the sliding friction. For example, a load can be easily shifted from one place to another by rolling than by dragging or sliding it on the ground. Fluid friction. The friction that exists when the contacting surfaces are separated by a film of fluid is known as fluid friction. It arises when a film of fluid separates two surfaces and when layers of the fluid move over each other at different speeds. The fluid friction is important in the problems involving the flow of fluids through pipes and channels or dealing with bodies immersed in moving fluid. This type of friction is also termed as film friction or viscous friction. Let's discuss the angle of friction. Before knowing the angle of friction, let us learn what an impending motion is. The motion is said to be impending if the applied forces are such that the body is just about to slide. Look at the figure of a man pushing the carton. When the applied force is just about to make the carton move, then that motion is called an impending motion. If you consider the figure shown, you can see that F and N are reactive components of the total reaction NF exerted by the plane surface upon the block. The size of the angle between NF and N depends on the value of the frictional resistance F. 
if f is 0, this angle 2 is 0. As f increases, so does the angle. The particular value of this angle when maximum frictional resistance is acting is defined as the angle of friction. It acts at its maximum value of f only when the motion is impending. Tangent of the angle of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction. Wedge friction For making final alignments, it is necessary to lift heavy blocks, machineries, precast beams, etc. slightly. This is done by driving in small pieces of metals or wood called wedges. In the picture, you can see that wedge P is introduced to lift the block up. A wedge may be defined as a simple machine which is commonly used to transform an applied force into much larger forces directed approximately at right angles to the applied force. Wedges can also be used to give small displacements or adjustments to heavy loads. In solving wedge problems, it is convenient to consider the resultant reaction R instead of frictional force F and normal reaction N. Lame's theorem or the force triangle construction can be used in the analysis conveniently since the wedge will be in equilibrium under the action of three forces when self-weight is neglected. friction neglected. It can be explained by equilibrium of wedge and equilibrium of slider. Let us start with equilibrium of wedge. The wedge is acted upon by a horizontal force F. Reaction Rn1 of the surface A in the vertical direction. Reaction Rn2 of the slider normal to slanting surface. For the equilibrium of the wedge, three forces must meet at a point and be balanced vectorially. Thus, Rn2 must pass through the point of intersection of F and Rn1. F is equal to Rn2 sin alpha. Also, Rn1 is equal to Rn2 cos alpha is equal to F by sin alpha into cos alpha. We know that cos alpha by sin alpha is cot alpha. So, the expression becomes F cot alpha. When we discussed about equilibrium of slide, the slider is acted upon by the weight W vertically downwards, the reaction Rn2 of the wedge equal and opposite to Rn2, the reaction of the guide. Let x is equal to height of lower end of guide from D, y is equal to height of the guide. Balancing the horizontal and vertical components of forces. Let us understand the few basic concepts which will help to understand friction. To study the principle of friction as applied to dry lubricated surfaces, let us understand through a simple experiment. Consider a block of weight of weight W resting on a rough horizontal surface and assume a horizontal force P applied to the block as shown in the figure. When P is given, increasing values that are insufficient to cause a motion, the frictional resistance F increases correspondingly to maintain equilibrium. Eventually, the block is on the verge of moving and at this instant, F attains its maximum available value. Any further increase in P causes motion, but surprisingly, the value of F does not stay at its maximum but decreases rapidly to a kinetic value which remains fairly constant.
Fundamental Laws of Friction Coulomb, in 1781, conducted experiments on blocks tending to move without rotation on flat surfaces. He arrived at certain conclusions which came to be known as Coulomb's Laws of Friction. The conclusions are The total force of friction that can be developed is independent of the magnitude of the area of contact. For low relative velocities between sliding objects, the frictional force is practically independent of velocity. The above conclusions may come as a surprise to most of us and be contrary to our intuition, but they are accurate statements for many engineering applications. Laws of Friction If friction is neglected, the reactions are always normal to the surfaces in contact. Friction always acts to oppose the relative motion of the free body. It is tangential to the surfaces in contact. The total frictional force that can be developed, which is also the static friction, as long as a body is still not moving, is proportional to the normal force transmitted across the surface of contact. That is, F is proportional to N, the normal force, or F is equal to product of mu, S and N. If motion occurs, the kinetic friction always acts as its constant value and then F is equal to the product of mu, K and N. Friction considered. Let psi dash is angle of friction between frame A slider S and wedge B. This is also explained with equilibrium of wedge and equilibrium of slider. The forces acting on the wedge are the horizontal force F, the reaction R1 inclined at an angle psi dash with Rn1. The wedge moves towards left and so the friction force acts towards right. The reaction R2 inclined at an angle psi dash with Rn2. For equilibrium, equilibrium of slider. The slider is acted upon by the reaction R2 dash of the wedge equal and opposite to R2. The weight W dash vertically downwards. The reactions R3 and R4 of the guide. Taking moments about O, Let's understand the relation between the angle of friction and the angle of incline. By simply knowing the angle or the inclination, you can then calculate the static sliding coefficient of friction between the two materials and thus the angle of friction. The angle of inclination is equal to the angle of friction when the body is just about to slide. You can use wooden board and a brick to calculate the coefficient of friction between wood and the brick material. Sheet of iron on the board and an iron block to slide down the ramp. Sheet of iron with a film of oil on it and an iron block to slide down the ramp. In each of the above cases, the coefficient of friction will be different because the angle of incline will change for the body to just slide for each of the above combinations. Ladder Friction A ladder may be defined as a device meant for climbing or scaling roofs or walls. Two long uprights of wood, iron or rope connected by a number of cross pieces called lungs form a ladder. It is important to know the forces acting on the ladder which will help in solving problems on ladder friction. Self-weight of the ladder W acting at the center of gravity of the ladder. Normal reaction offered by the flow NF acting at A. Friction force offered by the flow FF acting along the flow.
normal reaction offered by the wall NW acting at B and friction force offered by the wall FW acting along the wall. This is considered negligible if the wall is smooth. In addition, the ladder is supposed to carry the weight of the person climbing it. Belt friction Belts are extensively used to transmit power from one shaft to another shaft. The belts are classified as flat belts, V belts. Flat belts are classified into open belt drive, crossed belt drive and compound belt drive. The transmitted power, however, depends on the frictional resistance between the belt and the driving surface with which it is in contact. If the driving pulley is smooth, no frictional resistance exists and therefore the tension throughout the belt will be constant and will have the same value on both sides of the pulley. But practically, this is not the case. The pulley is rough and the tensions on both sides of the pulley vary. Let us discuss the formula for tension, length of the open belt and crossed belt. Consider a flat belt which passes over a cylindrical drum as shown in the figure. Let T1 and T2 be the tension in the two parts of the belt, B is the angle of contact measured in radians and M is the coefficient of friction between the belt and the pulley. Then the ratio between the two tensions is given by If x is the distance between the centers of the pulley, r1 is the radius of the larger pulley, r2 is the radius of the smaller pulley. Then the length of the open belt is, then the length of the cross belt is, now let us discuss the cone friction. When a body is having impending motion in the direction of P, the frictional force will be the limiting friction and the resultant reaction R will make limiting friction angle alpha with the normal as shown in the figure. If the body is having impending motion in some other direction, again the resultant reaction makes limiting frictional angle alpha with the normal in the direction. Thus, when the direction of force P is gradually changed through 360 degrees, the resultant R generates a right circular cone with semi-central angle equal to alpha. If the resultant reaction is on the surface of this inverted right circular cone whose semi-central angle is limiting frictional angle alpha, the motion of the body is impending. If the resultant is within this cone, the body is stationary. This inverted cone with semi-central angle equal to limiting frictional angle alpha is called cone of friction. Now, let us learn about the centrifugal tension. You all know that when a particle of mass m is rotated in a circular path of radius r, at a uniform velocity, a centrifugal force acts radially outward. A belt moving with a certain velocity on a pulley develops a centrifugal force which acts downwards from the center of the pulley. This force is known as the centrifugal tension of the belt. If V is the velocity of the belt in M by S and M is the mass of the belt per meter length, Centrifugal tension Tc is equal to mv square. If T0 is the initial tension, T1 is the tension on the tight side, T2 is the tension on the slack side. Then T0 is equal to the sum of T1 and T2 by 2 when centrifugal tension is not considered or T0 is equal to the sum of T1, T2 and 2Tc by 2 
when the centrifugal tension is considered. Power transmission by a belt. Power transmitted by the belt is given by where V is the linear velocity of the belt. Let the maximum tension in the belt be T max equal to sum of T1 and Tc or T1 is equal to difference of T max and Tc substituting for T1 in equation 2. Power transmitted is maximum under optimum value of V that is when D P by dV is equal to 0. By differentiating the equation 3, we get T max minus 3 mV square is equal to 0 or T max equal to 3 mV square or T max is equal to 3 Tc since mV square is Tc. Under maximum power conditions, Tc is equal to T max by 3 and we know that T max is the sum of T1 and Tc. By substituting Tc value in this equation, we get T max is equal to sum of T1 and T max by 3 or T1 is equal to 2 by 3 T max. Now, let's discuss the procedure to solve problems in friction. When there is only one block on a horizontal plane, or an inclined plane, it is easy to solve the problem of the force to be applied to make the block move by writing the free body diagrams, which should include all the forces, namely the weight of the block, applied force, the normal and frictional force between the contacts, and then solving for the unknowns using the equations of equilibrium, that is summation of x is equal to 0 and summation of y equal to 0. While solving for the unknowns, the problem can be made simpler by using frictional force in terms of the normal force with the help of the factor mu, the coefficient of friction, F is equal to mu N. By substituting for N in one of the equations of equilibrium, after finding out F, the force to be applied to make the block move can be found out. When it comes to two blocks, one above the other, or in the case of wedging, the problem has to be solved by writing the free body diagram of the blocks individually and applying the Lamas theorem or force triangle method. Numericals A 200 newtons block is at rest on a 30 degrees incline. The coefficient of friction between the block and the incline is 0.20. Compute the value of a horizontal force P that will cause the motion to impend up the incline. Click to see the solution of the problem. Let us summarize the topic that we have studied. At the end of this topic, you have learnt Basic concepts like Types of friction Laws of friction Angle of friction Criteria for minimum force required for the body to impend Wedge and its application Applications of friction